Okay, let's look at some of the, the bigger world issues that can affect these small business operators we've been talking to. Alex, uh, in, in particular you, you know, when you think about the unusual world you've had to work in over the last two years, we know that there are supply chain problems which have driven up prices, making some things uh, unsourceable, um, if such a word exists, exists. It is as of now, I've made the word unsourceable a real word. <laughs> uh, so the bottom line, I guess, is how have you had to pivot, which of course is a, a coronavirus where we never used to use pivot like we used to. How has, have you pivoted as a consequence of these supply chain problems and challenges? Um, yeah, there's been a, quite a few moving parts to our supply chain in the last um, couple of years. I suppose at the, the starting point, um, the raw material costs have gone up um, significantly, up to sort of 30% for some products um, that we import. Um, so that has been a challenge and we've looked at, you know, competitive sourcing um, as well as what the market is doing here in terms of the cost um, that we're passing on to the customer. Um, but then there's also been the impact of COVID um, on factories having to shut down, uh, particularly in China for significant periods of time um, some still now, uh, and in India as well. And with that, we really faced a difficult decision because we didn't want to leave these factories in the lurch. A lot of them we have worked with for almost 10 years and their family run businesses and we're a significant part of their, um, you know, annual income. So for us to simply pull an order and take it to another factory would be devastating for some of those suppliers. So we were really doing a lot of balancing, moving parts of things to new suppliers, moving some things to entirely new countries, and then quickly pivoting back when we could, when we felt like there was um, enough um, certainty in the um, future for us to be able to get a, a range out. Um, once we were able to get products made, it was a whole other thing to get them from the um, port in China or India to Australia. Um, it was almost comical, <laughs> the number of challenges and that evergreen boat in the canal, Panama Canal was just <laughs> like... I thought um, someone, it was April's Fool's Day or something, you couldn't have um, made that stuff up. Um, and that we, do, we don't ship through there, but the um, impact to our business was felt for months and months and months. And, um, you know, even today, the um, biggest port in Shanghai is um closed and so we're still having to make decisions about moving launch dates or putting things on pre-order. Um, so really, truly, at every point in our business there's been impacts to um, our supply chain. Not only did your costs go up, but because maybe more people were buying online like never before, at least there was a bit of a, a help to the business that there was more potential buyers online for your products? Yeah, well, it, it was a um, tricky situation for me and because demand went up, but we couldn't deliver the product when we needed to. So the opportunity was there and we wanted to grab it, but we couldn't always go after it with two hands like we would want to. And um, in truth, when COVID first hit, uh, we had no idea, like anyone, what was going to happen and we wanted to protect the business. So we actually cut our orders with, that we had out with suppliers or reduced them. We, we pulled um, products from the US where we have to get US specific bedding sizes. We decided to kind of um, insulate the Australian business, which is the most significant um, part of our business, by reducing the size of the order. Um, in hindsight, we could have probably sold five times over, but we didn't know at the time. So yeah, it was um, a very difficult time for the business, but we've come through. Yeah. Mac, what about you and your supply um, chain issues uh, with the coronavirus? Um, so we did have issues with seed coming through, but other than that, we don't really um, import anything. But localised supply chains um, were affected a little bit. So that's kind of where the TAS Produce Collective came into play and we kind of created our own logistics through the collective so we were able to get stuff out to people without having to rely on anyone else. So, so basically... 
your supply chain wasn't desperately affected, like in the case of um, Alex? No, and that's um, the good thing about buying local produce. Um, firstly, is you know that we don't um, get affected by those costs that a lot of other bigger producers would be affected by. I'm not sure if you've seen veggie prices at Woolies recently, but they've gone through the roof because of um, all of the cost increases with logistics. So all of our produce has actually stayed consistent um, even through those events because everything's local. So yeah, you're not only going to get fresh produce when you buy locally, but you can also get um, consistently lower prices. So it, it didn't provide an opportunity for you to get slightly higher prices? Um, we always try and go um, with fair pricing for organic products. So it always will be a higher price point because it is organic. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, James, um, were, were there any sort of supply chain issues for your business or were there... Um, you know, people wanting to work from home, um, but you you want to be a face to face, you know, touchy feely mm. kind of operation. <laughs> you know, and yeah. I, I say it in the nicest possible way, uh, but but yeah. basically, <laughs> w w was that a, a a thing that you had to actually work through to look after your staff at the same time look after your customers? Yeah, on the supply side, it was more that the institutions, the banks, the financial companies and everybody like that um, were all in the same boat as us in terms of um, working remotely. So on the supply side, in terms of financial products and companies that we deal with, that was definitely impacted, um, you know, because they were trying to uh, learn how to work remotely. And um, so on the supply side, that was impacted. The biggest impact for us was, um, like you said, clients and delivering service to clients. Uh, in the accounting side of the business, their workload doubled um, when the support packages came in because they're already looking after all of the businesses and clients. And then suddenly, um, you know, to, to get clients on the government relief and support packages, um, there was a lot of work there. Uh, and then on the wealth side of the business, there's compliance and uh, delivering service to clients in terms of those face-to-face -face meetings and having to go uh, digital and video and all of these things that just weren't weren't a thing. Um, and then managing staff and, um, you know, I had somebody uh, in the team that had moved remote to Byron Bay and then we're trying to hire somebody else and then we're in a lockdown. And um, yeah, look, I think staffing and, and um, day-to-day -day management was just, you know, yeah, a, a massive impact, yeah. So has tech become more important in your business than ever before? Tech's massively important in our business now. I think that it was all, all, always going to be the way we were heading. It just really pushed people literally overnight into forcing you to use, um, you know, tech to, um, you know, be better at business and be more efficient. Alex, in your case, you know, clearly being online, it's a, uh, really important for your operation to be on the cutting edge of tech. You know, who, who is the tech person? Do, have you hired someone as a tech person or have all three owners become really tech savvy? There's definitely a gap in our skill set um, with my founders and I, probably the weakest point for us. Um, so we have hired someone that um, helps us on anything technical. Um, and you're right, it's so, so important to us. We don't have a business without technology and we're constantly investing in our website and looking at um, better ways to service our customers and offering 3D modelling or, or whatever the next thing might be. Um, but yeah, it's very, very important to us. So has it been a, a journey of discovery about what you have to outlay to have your website really productive to make sales, but what it costs to do something like that? Because the cost can be scary until you actually see the results. And if the results aren't there, it's even scarier. Definitely. And I think for so long, we ran the business on the a smell of an oily rag. We really just rolled up our sleeves and did absolutely everything we could ourselves. And where we had to um, get external help, 
we did so a bit reluctantly um, and we managed our finances very tightly and now we're in a position to be able to invest um, a little more significantly but it still hurts a bit <laughs> when you have to um, pay that invoice and there are some significant um, invoices that come in around technology but it's certainly worth it because we now do get to see the return of that investment. How about you Mac and and tech? Who, who's the tech the tech head in your business and is it important and does it cost you a fair bit? Yes, well, it's definitely not me. Um, it's my partner, Ollie. But we're definitely looking into some significant investment into ag tech. So um, we want to kind of automate a lot of things that take a lot of time on a daily basis. Um, it does cost a lot of money, but our time also costs a lot of money. So we're really trying to get that efficiency just through some new new toys for Ollie. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Good to hear that you've got some toys coming. Just to wrap up, because, you know, we've been listening to you talk about lots of, you know, discovery issues and growth issues that you've encountered along the way. But if someone who is really near and dear to you said, I'm going to go into business soon, what is the most important lesson I need to know to make sure I'm as su successful as you? What do you think you'd start off with? What would be the key message you'd give that nearest and dearest? Um, money. <laughs> Make sure you have your finances sorted, have savings, don't go into debt. Um, that's the only way that you can start. Yeah. Money is very important in business. Yes. <laughs> All right, Alex, you can't, you can't give us the same answer because we know money is important in business. But, I, I, <laughs> you know, reflecting on where you came from when you started, what, what do you think is the the really big realisation someone starting a business needs to really comprehend? Um, I think that you need to have a business idea that you're truly passionate about um, because it takes up um, every waking hour that you have when it's your own uh, baby. And so I think you really need to love what you're doing. And the other thing I'd say is that you need to have great business partners. Um, so many people I know whose small businesses have failed it's been because of a breakdown in communication with their business partners so i think if you can find the right partners from the get-go then you put yourself in pretty good stead yeah james i'm going to steal some of alex's but it was going to be um yeah look if you look at your long-term vision um you've really got to be connected to why you're doing what you're doing because you need the drive and the motivation to keep persevering because not every day is great um, but you know when you do have a good day um, you celebrate so you need the drive to keep going um, and then surrounding yourself with the right people um, but probably the only other thing to add is just before you just jump in just take a step back and um, look at different ways you could do it um, because like Max said um, you know you will need the resources and and money and Alex said you need the right people so um, you know there's different ways you could get into your own business um, so you know rather than just going head on in just to research your options as well and then make an informed decision. It's my experience that small business people learn from each other so let's ask our panellists to ask questions of each other. How about you first, James? Have you got anything you'd like to ask Alex or, or Mac? I'd like to ask Mac uh, a question. One part of the, I think, you know, sustainable farming that's really kind of perked my interest was um, seaweed. Have you yes. looked into that? And it's big in Tassie as well. So, um, yeah, have you thought of that in terms of what you're doing at all? Yeah, so one of the... Um amendments that we use is called Seamungus. So uh, yes, it's using kelp to um, help add that nutrients into the soil. And um, I also, with my work for the university, there's a new project with asparagopsis, which is red seaweed. So they're actually looking at um, growing it on a commercial scale to then have it as feed for animals to help um, reduce their methane input. So that's a huge reason why people don't eat red meat is because of the methane that happens when they eat the food. So if we can kind of reduce that significantly, it could have a huge impact on climate change. What about you, Mac? Have you, have you got a, a question for, for either James or Alex? I've actually got a question for Alex. Um, I just want to know what it's like to manage a team of four people, really. Um, well, in my previous roles, I had probably bigger teams than that. And I think that is what kept me in those 
professions. I really love working with people and I love managing people or just working alongside them. So it's not something that feels particularly onerous to me. Um, I would say that people issues <laughs> start happening even when you have a team of two, you know, that they're there from the get-go. So it's just part and parcel of having a business. But I, I just love it. Well, on that point, uh, Alex, what did you learn about hiring people? Because that's a really important lesson for lots of businesses. People often, someone leaves and they rush and they employ someone and they find they've got the wrong person. What have you learned about how to hire the right people? Yeah, it's um, been another area that has had significant changes in recruitment. Um, it's definitely an employee's market at the moment. And so it just takes a lot of time to find the right person. I think people now are looking for an organisation that really matches with their values um, in a way that maybe before the primary um, priority for them was um, financial. Uh, it's a much more rounded proposition now. And so you really need to live and breathe that as a business. So we're having to really pitch the full um, Kip and Co concept, concept to recruit people. It's not just here's the title and here's the salary. That's not enough for people now. Um, and I think as an employer, you just have to be patient and, until you find the right people. And we still, you know, we, you get that wrong at times, but um, I think if you have the right core, then eventually that, um, you know, you're attracting the right team. Okay. And do you have a question for any of our fellow panellists? Um, I want to have one for James, but it's for Mac. <laughs> Sorry, James. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I was just wondering what you think we can do to disrupt the mass agriculture model faster because I love what you're doing, but the speed with which we need to address um, climate change probably means we need to really have some disruptor uh, in the agricultural space. And do you have any thoughts on what that is or does it need to be um, death by a thousand cuts of small agricultural projects? I think the latter, unfortunately. Um, and it's just everyday shopping with people. If we can get all of those people who are shopping at Coles or Woolies to have 5% of their shopping done um, with a local producer, it all has an effect. Um, and so just those baby steps with people's individual choices will definitely make a difference. Um, and it's also all well, the agricultural research, like I was just referencing with the methane reduction, that will also help. And that's our panel session. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've learned a lot that will take your business to the next level.